Hello, hello. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. So, of course, this is an Apollo webinar sponsored by Apollo, my employer. I've actually been an employee here for a month. I've been a customer of Apollo for much longer than that. It's a wonderful platform. If you have an account, thank you for your business. If you don't, you can go to another tab and go to Apollo.io, create a free trial account. You can do a lot of what I'm going to show you today with the free trial account you can set up right now. Everything I'm going to show you today, I'm going to be doing it live. And this isn't going to be all slides. I'm going to do it live in Apollo. You'll be able to replicate it tonight, probably. You probably won't be able to sleep. You're going to want to start setting this up. We've got a resource kit for you. I'm James O'Sullivan. I'm an Apollo Academy instructor. I've been in sales 15 years. Sales is my life. I've got a wonderful sales library here. Sold for career builder for 11 years, managing mid-market and enterprise teams. Sold myself, was the salesperson of the year there. Uh, went to Uber to help them figure out sales for one of their startups. Everything from wholesaling financial products through data, software, everything you can imagine, right? I'll be building more and more content for the Apollo Academy. If you haven't seen it, you can go to uh, resources on Apollo.io. Wonderful content there. Now, why are we talking about this today? Why, why is this the third of three webinars talking about setting up your Apollo, setting up yourself for success in 2024? 70% of sales reps are saying it's harder to sell now than it was this time last year. And if you look at this data from last year, it was around 70% that said it was harder to sell then as well, right? So I want to cover things that are going to help you make it easier this year. And actually, you can have your best year ever as opposed to struggling, uh, saying, hey, this is going to be worse than 2023. We're going to find better leads, and we want to do it with less effort. We want to book more meetings, right? Hold more of those meetings, close more deals, and just make it easy to see everything that's organized, track everything, right? So let's get into, uh, actually, I didn't look at any of the, hopefully you were posting your goals for 2024. A lot of greetings from around the world. I appreciate that. If you still have some goals, pop them in the chat. I'll go to that in a second. Finding better leads. Sales, you know, there's different ways to talk about this. Sometimes people say numbers game. Uh, what, how I look at it is it's a math game because everybody's numbers are going to be different, right? Maybe you have a, a ton of leads and you end up closing a, a lot of deals. You're selling Zag Nut candy bars. You're probably closing a lot of them, right? Uh, if you're closing nuclear power plants, it might not be many, but you're looking at the ratios. You start with a lot of leads. In this case, a, let's say a thousand leads, and you're only going to get a certain amount of those folks on the phone right? And into meetings. You'll notice here with a thousand great leads, 700 of them are in the market right now. I talked to 140 of them, 28 meetings are scheduled, 20 are held, and I closed six. Again, maybe that's good or bad, but you probably have this same sort of funnel for your business. Now, little changes in that funnel, right? You can have a dramatically different year and you don't need to do much. You just need to make little improvements all along the way. You'll notice that if we can improve just by 10%, everything along the way, and we don't even need to improve our, how, like how we're selling, how we're closing there, but just a 10% increase in how many leads we're getting on the phone, how many people are showing up for meetings, that sort of thing. You'll see that as opposed to six deals closed, we're now at 17. That's a 280% increase in total business just with those 10% uh, improvements all along the way, right? It compounds. So you're saying, well, yeah, but that looks great. Uh, but how are we going to do that? So I'm going to walk you through that. I'm going to walk it through how I've got it set up. And again, our resource kit is going to show you how to do all this. So let's start with finding better leads. And again, we're starting at that top of the funnel. And how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you how to use our buyer intent filters. And now a lot of these, you might recognize some of these things. I used Apollo, like for example, at Uber and people there train me how to use it. I've never seen anybody have it set up this way. And you're going to, when you know, see this, you're going to want to set it up yourselves. I'm going to ask you to set it up before the end of the week. If you can get one of these set up for the end of the week, you're more likely to pull through on all of them. And you're going to see that compounding benefit really quickly. So we're going to set up signals, lead scoring. We're going to save everything. So we get alerts and new leads coming to us right on our home screen, right? Or in, into our inbox. And we're going to organize everything. We're going to organize it in a way where we always know what we should be doing and what it means. So let's pop over to Apollo and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So I'm going to share my Apollo screen. Here we go. So you should see my Apollo right now. Actually, let me share the whole window. I think some folks said sometimes there's a problem with that. 
Cheers, Thomas. Here we go. We're in Apollo. This should look exactly like yours, right? And if you just set up your free trial account, this is what it's going to look like. And you're used to this. And most users, almost everybody that has Apollo is used to hopping over to search, right? So I'm going to hop over to search and I'm going to show you how we're going to set it up uh, to be a little bit different than maybe how you're doing it today. Let me clear out all the filters here. There we go. So we're going to prioritize everything and we're going to label it as such. So again, and I'll show you on the next part of this presentation why, but not all leads are created equal. There's going to be ones that you'd spend a lot more time on and prioritize, right? And there's going to be ones where they might be a good fit, but you can't spend all day on them. You shouldn't be spending the same amount of time on, on all your leads. So let me close out all these filters and we'll start where you might be starting today, where the people at Uber, when they trained me and, and at Career Builder, how we were doing it then. And that was hop into Apollo, put in a job title, a location, an industry. There's usually three or four fields that people were popping in, right? What I'm going to ask you to do is let's set them up as a persona. The things that you're always searching for, or maybe you have a couple of different product lines and you, you, you know exactly what you search for there. Set them up as a persona so you don't have to do it again. Now, I'm an Apollo Academy instructor, so I'm going to get permission here to go sell Apollo to, uh, tr sales training to organizations so I can make some extra money and buy prizes and swag for people in the webinars. So I'm going to be going to market here looking for organizations that would be a good fit for me to sell this, right? You'll notice that I've already created a persona here called sales leadership. You hit manage personas right here. You could have multiple of these, but if you want to create a new one, you'll notice that all that stuff that most folks end up searching for each time, you could just pop it right in here, do it once. You don't need to do it again. Job titles, industries, locations, all that. Now you've got your persona set up. You don't need to worry about it again. And that'll be the base of our filter, right? So we've got our basic, what, what might be your search today set up. And you'll notice that from all those 275 million potential leads, I'm now down to 101,000, right? Uh, again, that's how I used to do it. Now we're going to say, okay, I want to spend my time wisely. What's the next thing I'm going to do? I'm going to ask you to scroll down to email status. If you haven't used this before, you'll notice that there's two green options now in email status. There used to be one. Maybe you're using that. The second one came recently. Likely to engage and verify. We want to protect our domain. We want to protect our time. I'm going to select both of those. And you'll notice that from the 275 million to 100,000, now I'm down to 76,000, right? And yeah, you could follow along. I'm good. I, I, to, to make it all fit in, it's going to be tough to follow along exactly at the same time. The resource kit will walk you through it. And of course, you'll get a recording later. So now I've got, everybody has the titles and industries I'm looking for and locations, uh, size of company. And I know their emails are good. And I've got 76,000, still too many for me to optimize my time, right? So this is where we're going to create our save searches based on uh, levels here, right? We're going to start with, okay, we've got good emails. We got that. And that might be my baseline search. I'm going to save as number five, something I'm going to try to automate more, my lowest priority search. But now we're going to add something to that and start working up the list. So what's the next thing we're going to add? Well, potentially we want to look at um, signals or technology. Something that really starts to narrow it down that might be ideal or more fertile for what I'm trying to sell. For me, I added technology. I want people that are using certain tech platforms that I know because that's going to allow me to sell them, uh, you know, to service whatever they're looking for better. So I'm starting to get into my mediums where it's the titles, the locations, right? But it's good emails and they're using the tech platforms I want. You'll notice that I've got all these filters set up for technology. I'm looking for organizations that are using HubSpot and Salesforce. There's lots of different options in here. You could just pick, if, if they don't make sense for what you're selling, that's fine. But oftentimes you can go through here and start saying, okay, we're a better fit when somebody's using this technology, Microsoft Office or Google Workspace, whatever it might be. This is where it gets really interesting because this is something that too few people use. I didn't use it when I was at Uber, but we're going to start adding signals. So when you're in the search, you'll scroll down to signals and you'll notice that you can start telling Apollo things to look for happening at a company or in somebody's career. That could be everything from they bought a company, they sold a company, they launched a new product, got rid of a product. I'm going to scroll down right here. You'll see where my mouse is. I've already set up two. I know when these things are happening with all the other stuff I normally would have looked for, 
they're going to be much more responsive to what I'm trying to sell, which is sales training, right? You'll see, I've already got two turned on here, sales or growth and new product or service. Those are good for me. Each, each step of the way, again, we're going to hit save search. And instead of titling it the job title or the date, I know a lot of people do that. We're going to organize these by priority. And how I do it, you'll notice that I title it three medium high uh, persona, email, tech, and signals. Now I know exactly what's happening here. And that'll help us later on when we're doing our activity. What else can we do? We, we've got the title. We got the location. We got the size of the company. We got this all saved so we could build off it in the future. We know they got good emails. They're using the technology or, or that is best for us to sell into. And now I've got the signal set up. Now we're going to start adding intent on top of that as well. And by the way, sorry, if I saw a couple of questions here. For signals, if you want to set up your signals and, or see what the options are, uh, you can click right here to settings or you just go to settings on the bottom left. And when you scroll down over here, you'll notice there's a little signals uh, option. This is where we've got some in here. You'll see I've got a number of pre-built ones, but when you hit create signal, you can choose people or companies. You can name it. I, I normally name it after I create the signal. But when you scroll down, you'll see there's a plethora of options. There's a lot of options. So for people, I could say, hey, there's something in the news about this individual or the company, leadership, acquisition, cost cutting, recognition, new contracts, years of experience, new job, uh, headcount growth. And not only that, headcount growth by department. So that's one of the uh, signals I set up. You'll notice that when we go back to my searches, I wanted an organization that had all that other stuff I was looking for, and their headcount was growing in the sales department by 20%. So now we've got all of that. It's all organized. Where else can we get more specific with our time? Because you'll notice, even with the signals, I've got 4,700 leads, right? I can work that over time, but I, want, I really want to put more effort this year into the best opportunities. This is where you're going to layer in intent as well. And I get a lot of questions on this. I'll, uh, if, if you have questions, pop them in the Q&A right there, and I'll try to answer them to the best I can. But buying intent, if you haven't used this before, I think it's a game changer. I've been testing it out. You can go high, medium, and low. Now, you're going to say, how would you know if somebody out there wants to buy what I'm selling? When you go to buying intent, you'll notice that you can hit this edit button. When you hit edit, everything, oh, I've not had anybody tell me that what they sell or some proxy for it wasn't in here yet. So for me, I'm selling sales training. I was able to pick sales training providers or sales training and onboarded software. You can pick what is good for what you're selling. And now I've created my save search too, is people low and medium intent. So I know that maybe it's one person or they're just starting to have that conversation and start looking. And the people that are high intent, they're looking to buy today. They're the right size company and everything else. I want to talk to them right away. So you'll notice that for my save search, my highest priority, number one, I've only got 60. I can put more effort on the ones where they've got everything I want, plus the changes in the company are ideal, and they've shown high intent through our Bombora data here, right? 60 is something I could work. So you're going to layer everything from your most targeted, smallest lead list, you're going to make that your highest priority and you're going to title it as such, right? All the way down to your biggest, most, your widest funnel of prospects. And when it's organized that way, now we can organize the leads into the list and how we work them as well. So again, when you have a list, when you have a search, you're going to select the leads you want to push over to your list. That's where you're going to get the contact information and name it the same way. Keep everything organized. This is something I hear from folks all the time is they get confused of what they've previously done and they don't want to pull people out of sequences or they're not sure what they're supposed to be doing. When you've got everything titled and prioritized, now you can work it to the best of your ability and you're not thinking about it, right? So I'm you move the contacts over that you want to work and now you've got your lead list with all the contact information there as well. And if you want to see how you do that, I'll move some people into my high priority list just because I've got some net new um, people in here, you hit, well, for me, I'm hitting that new cause I've been using this, but you can start selecting people that you want to move over and you'll notice there's a little plus button right here. Add to list. Since this is my high, my save search, number one, highest priority. Uh, this is where I'm going to select high priority, high intent, hit save. They move over the contact information goes there as well. Now you've got the, the best leads of your life. They're organ. It's not just great leads but you've got information on them. You know, okay, these people have high intent. 
medium intent. They're starting the conversation. These people are seeing these changes in their company that are good for what I'm selling. And it's all organized. And that's going to allow you to do your best work. So we've got those leads. We've got the contact information over there. We're using all these uh, capabilities of Apollo so that we can organize things and have the best leads of our life. How are we going to work them? Let me take you back to the deck and we'll show you what to do there. And I don't, I didn't see if anybody posted any of their goals. Um, so I'm sorry to get back to that, but if you did, I'll try to find it here in just one second. So let me stop sharing that. Get us over to the deck again. So again, buying intent filters, signals, lead scoring, save searches, and organizing it all. That's all going to be in the resource kit. So you know exactly how to do it as well. Of course, you're going to get a recording of this, but the resource kit's going to give you a little bit more granularity there. So now we want to get more meetings from it, right? We've, we're more organized than we've ever been. We've gone deeper in terms of the Apollo capabilities to find the best leads. How are we going to get more meetings from that? So how are we going to improve that reply rate, right? Or, or people getting back to you, connecting. And the reason that's so important is the game has changed. I think everybody's well aware of this. It's all over LinkedIn. People are constantly talking about it, right? The email providers are changing how they do things. People don't want to get as much spam, right? Uh, things aren't working as well. I think I just saw, I don't, I don't remember the app, what's after the decimal, but it used to be 10 years ago, it was four touches to get a, a meeting. And now it was 10. I saw, I think that was Salesforce data. So it's, it is more difficult, right? And email is not working as well. So what we're going to do in 2024, so we can win better than we did last year, is we're going to diversify our outreach and we're going to go, we're going to have more ways of creating those touches, right? So as opposed to just, if you were just doing automated emails last year, this year you're going to, you'll use some automated emails, less probably, right? But you're going to see more success because you're you're doing manual emails. You're highly personalized emails that connect with people. You're going to be doing calls and LinkedIn, events, direct mail, all of that. So what's this going to do for you? Your results grow and they actually compound. It's not a matter of, you'll see here as you add all these other touch points, it's not just of adding hey, I, I got five from here and I could get 10 from there and adding them up. No, no, no. Everything ends up doing better. So let's just say if normally, hey, if I did a thousand emails, I might get a hundred responses and I got 10% reply rate for that. So I wonder what the conversion rates on these other things are going to be. It it doesn't work that way. What ends up happening is the conversion rates on everything go up when you're, when you're combining them all together. And that, in, in my career, I've seen some of the best things happen where I send a handwritten note and they don't write me a handwritten note back, right? But I often would say, I'm going to be calling you uh, on this date, or I'll send an email on Sundays. I used to do Sunday emails. I know you're not there, but I just wanted to be the first email you saw in the morning because I'm going to call you 845, right? Everything ends up doing better. You see a higher conversion rate, more touches. Reason this is so important, I want to get you off the hamster wheel. When you're, when you're, when you're focusing on doing one thing and it starts to not work as well, right? Everything's getting tougher. Then you start sending more emails or you got to get more leads and eventually you can't get more leads or you can't send more emails or none of them are going through because your email gets shut down, right? I want to get you off the hamster wheel, feeling more in control of your time, seeing more success from it and giving yourself an opportunity to continue growing and, and prospering in your selling, your career, your business, whatever it might be. As an example of what I mean by this, you're not going to do this for everything, right? Those low priority leads we organized in bucket five, you're not going to do all this. But when you've got in your bucket one, in my example, I only had 60 leads across the country. Then I'm willing to do this, right? You're going to send a super personalized email on day one. Maybe you like uh, one of their LinkedIn posts that day. Call and leave a voicemail. I know a lot of people don't like to leave voicemails. I do. And I think the stats are to our benefit there. You're going to do a LinkedIn connection request the fourth day, et cetera, et cetera. And this is going to give you that boost here. If you're not doing this, it's probably going to be higher than 10%. I, it's, it's, it, I don't know what it'll be, but it's going to be pretty aggressive because we're seeing when people are doing mixing in just dials with their emails in a big way, the numbers are astounding. So I'm going to go into my Apollo, looks just like yours. I'm going to set up my high and medium and low priority sequences so that I always know what I, what I should be doing on these leads because everything's been organized from that initial search, right? I'm going to include cold call steps, LinkedIn touches, my manual, maybe some AI assisted emails. And I'm going to include some super high touch tasks too. I like handwritten letters or sending something in legal envelopes, FedEx and UPS. I always felt that looked like maybe it was more important. It seemed to work. Let's hop into Apollo. I'll show you how to do that. I hope everybody's having a good morning or good evening. If you're having trouble 
staying in the webinar because you just want to start get, build, building this. It's about 20 more minutes till the Q&A and then you could go set it up yourself. So here we go. We're going into my Apollo, sorry. We're going back into Apollo. We're at the home screen like we always knew it. And one of the reasons that setting up those saved searches, by the way, is so great. You're going to notice because I have my saved searches set up, this little recommended prospects button for you is going to work as well. And you're going to start seeing more and more contacts pop up that meet the things that you're looking for. And I really love this because it starts telling you why it's recommending. So based on the signals you set up, the scoring you set up, similar to past prospects that you liked, excellent score, new employee, that was the signal I set up. It really makes it nice. So we've got our searches set up. We've got our list with the leads in them. Now we're going to go to our sequences. This is where oftentimes users are setting up their automated email campaigns. Again, at a previous company where I use this, I was just taught to set up if you want to send an automated email, you create a sequence and you're sending one. No, we're going to organize all of our activity here. And you'll notice I've carried forward the same naming system that I had from my save search and my lead list all the way over here. No confusion. Everything from one to five, low priority to high priority. And I've actually included a little extra detail here, right? So for example, when I click into my, my uh, highest priority one, you'll notice I've got a lot of steps here. What those steps are, are... How do you want to work that type of lead? The ones where they have all those things that you're looking for. To set up a sequence, you just hit new sequence right here. You'll be given a couple simple options. I'm going to start from scratch just so you can see all the capabilities here. You can clone one if you already have it or somebody else on the team does. And we've got some pre-formatted and AI assisted ones as well. So let's go from scratch. I'm going to say, let's just say this is our number one, our highest priority. What do we want to do with those small, those very small lead lists where it's got everything it's the it's our glenn gary leads right so i'm gonna hit create um and you'll notice that you start with a blank slate here right so all you have to do is let me move this out of the way add a step and you'll be given a menu with most of the things people want to do or the, the most popular options right automatic email manual email phone call uh linkedin request action items where you put anything that might not be able to be tracked digitally or through your integrations right so if that's a handwritten note, you could just pop it right there. Now, let's just say this is our highest priority ones and we want to start with a manual email. You're going to say, okay, for any, any lead I put into this sequence, uh, when as soon as it goes in, in my tasks, I want to have teed up that I've got to send them an email or maybe it's 30 minutes to give myself a little bit of time to pull people out just to save myself some trouble of having to delete these tasks. These are my best leads. I'm going to say it's high priority. You might put a description here. You don't have to. But the reason you, you select high or low priority for these tasks is so that Apollo can start organizing everything you want to do. You don't have to think. And this is where you'll see our editor template. Now, you can go into emails and create your templates ahead of time. If you haven't, this is where you can start typing them and save them as a template later. You'll notice that we do have some AI as well. But I've already got an email that I've created here. You pop it in. Of course, you can include the uh, coding so that it says high first name, that sort of thing, if you're going to do anything automated. But I, I would prefer with, with a lead of this quality, I'm going to go to their LinkedIn or I'm going to look up some details. And because of my signals, because of all the details I have, I already got some good information to go on. When I make that call, I can say, hey, I heard you're in the market for sales training. Or I saw that your sales team is growing 40% because I have that signal, right? It's going to make it really easy to spend more time uh, and, and be more personalized without as much legwork. And what you're going to do again is you're going to tell yourself, how am I going to treat these leads? What am I going to do? You're going to organize it right here. And then you're going to move when you go back to your search because you've already organized your searches and all your saved leads. Now you can start adding them into sequence and you're not, again, no confusion here. One, my highest priority leads add to sequence. I'm going to put those into the sequence called one highest priority and everybody will move over there, their contact information, and I'll be ready to work it. Now you might be saying, well, how is that going to make it easier for me? How, how will I know what to do right on your home screen? You have tasks right here. If you go over here to tools and workflows, you can go directly to tasks. And let me shrink this so you can see mine a little bit better. And everything that you've got set up to do, whether it be your outbound activity for your leads uh, or your deals that you're trying to follow up on, it's all going to be here. It's going to tell you the priority, give you some notes, and you can just start banging away at them. One of the things that people have trouble with, 10% of the salesperson's day goes to just figuring out what to do, Optim uh, optimizing towards how you're going to spend your energy, 10%, right? Make it easy on yourself so that even if you have 15 minutes of spare time, you can make an impact and know you're putting it towards something that's um, important to your business. So now we've got great leads. Let me stop sharing that. Get back over here. We've got great leads. 
right? We've got the, the most organized setup we've ever had. We're setting ourselves up to be high touch, to get more done uh, with, with our day and to work these leads better than ever. Where are we going to go from there? How are we going to pull it through everything else we're doing? Now, mind you, we've got a resource kit. To me, those are the right there. You've got enough to have. If you're not doing that, 2024 could be much, much better than 2023 right there. And that's, I hear from a lot of folks, that's the first things they're setting up. You have the resource kit to show you how to pull through on both those things. And before we get to the next thing, I think it might be a good time to do the poll. Uh, Josh, do we have that already set up? Could I, could I share that? There we go. Perfect. Yeah, you just have to stop sharing your screen. Yeah, you got it. There we go. So if you don't have that stuff set up or you don't have an account that can access those things, right? If you're new to Apollo, you want to talk to somebody on our team, get a demo. You should see a poll up on the screen. Hit number one if you don't have Apollo. You like what you're seeing. You think it'd be better than what you have. Hit one. We'll get, we forward this over to a team that can get you connected to the right people on our sales team or our demo team. You could check it out. If you're a current customer and you're saying, I want to have all this stuff, I don't have it now, I want to get it for another team, hit number two, we'll get you to the right people so you can talk about upgrading, see what we can do there. If you just want more training or more of my bad jokes, whatever it might be, number three, don't need anything, you're having the best day, best night or morning of your life, you just love webinars and love learning about sales, hit number four. So I'll give that a second before I hop into the next thing here. Let me just check the chat. We got a lot of good questions going to Q and A. You do get the recording. Oh, Kristen, that's not my cousin. That's not related to me. I really appreciate that. I'm going to add an emoji to it. This is a gold mine. Super helpful. I'm on Pro. That's great. Pro can uh, everything you're seeing here. If you're on the Pro plan, I don't think I'm going to show you anything that you can't do. So just, I'm going to close the poll. It'll come back up uh, again later. Thank you, Michael. Uh, so we could get you connected over there, but I'm going to keep moving on just because we're at the 30 minute mark here. So stop sharing that. Let's get back over to the deck. And I'm having fun. You, uh, It's a fun chat here. I, I hope you're having a good time. I am. And I think you're going to like how we bring this home. Um, so we got great leads. We're organized. We got everything organized in our activity. So we're going to be spending more time with our best leads, less with the other ones, automating some of that. Now we just want to tighten up everything on the rest of the process, right? If you set both of those things up before that, before the weekend, you're going to have such a, uh, you're going to have, you'll be running with the wind, right? Or flying with the wind, whatever it's called, where you're going to say, I would just want to make everything better. So how are we going to improve uh, booking and holding more meetings, right? That's a spot where we can start improving even just 10%. You're going to see that compounding benefit. You're probably going to see more than 10% just on the leads and uh, your sequences there. So where can we fix something here? And now, at least when I was a rep, I, I would really celebrate booking the meeting. And I would, I, I think there's oftentimes we forget, hey, a lot of these people don't show up. And that number's been getting worse, right? Depending on your, what you're selling, it might be as high as 30 or 40% of no-shows. Doesn't mean they're not still great opportunities, right? That's the leaky bucket. 30% of meetings are not showing up. So can we improve that and can we make it easier to book those meetings or to reschedule or just to get our calendar in front of people? We can, and I'm going to show you how to set this up in Apollo. We're going to make it easier to book put book time on your calendar, right? We're going to make it easier to reschedule. We're going to make it easier for you to have your calendar wherever you need to have it, right? And as a little bonus, I'm just teasing, uh, teeing this up. It'll be in the resource kit. We can use those same sequences we use for our outbound activity, right? And with one little change, if somebody doesn't show up, we can put them into our no-show sequence, meaning we're going to have, a, we're already going to be prescriptive on how do we want to handle when somebody doesn't show up to give ourselves the best chances of bringing them back in. Now, this is something I wish when I was a sales manager, if I could have set this up for my team, it would have been a lifesaver, right? Because everybody has so much to do. I, we were dropping the ball on a lot of no-shows there. I'm going to set you that uh, you're going to see how to do that in the resource kit. Let's get into Apollo, set up our different meeting types, right? So we want to be just as optimized as everything else. I'm going to show you how to use this in your email, social media, that sort of thing. So let's hop over to my Apollo and I'll show you how to build this. Here we go. So we're back in my Apollo. We've got the searches. We got the leads. We set up our sequences. Now we're going to go to meetings because I want to be optimized and I want to make it easy to book with me, right? I want to make it easy to reschedule. I also want to make it easy for myself to know what link to send. 
So you'll notice if you go down to winning close in your Apollo, you're going to see that there is a, uh, a meetings tab right here. Now, before, if you haven't already done this, you can go to settings and you can actually start integrating your plat, uh, like your meeting providers, right? Or your calendar. Most people do this, especially if you're using Gmail at the beginning. If you haven't, you can go to settings and you could go straight to uh, integrations and you can connect your Google Meet, your Gmail, Zoom, whatever it might be. But when you go to meetings, you'll notice I've got a few different meeting types set up already. I've got a 30 minute meeting. That's how at previous companies, that's all we had. We had one meeting link, right? And I started digging into this and I got some, I saw how the best were doing it and they had different meeting links for different priority leads. So you'll notice here, high priority meeting. I want to have a link and you'll, I'll go into this one and show you what I've done here. But I've got one link for my best leads that's going to give them access to more of my calendar because for those 60 leads, I've only got 60 of them that match up with everything that's best for me. I want to start, some days I'm willing to get up earlier. I'm willing to meet with them on Saturday if that's when they want to book. So we're going to optimize everything in terms of how we're setting things up because this is going to give you a link and I'll just show you real quick my high priority meeting link so that when you send it to somebody, they can book time on your calendar. It's going to look at your calendar, see when you have time available, know what slots you're willing to give that person and somebody can just click it and it goes on both your calendars, right? Nice and simple. So to set up your meetings, all you have to do is go to create. You're going to pick single host here. We do have something where you could actually have your inbound leads go to the right people, depending on what type of lead it is. Uh, we would no, we don't have time to get into that right now, but it's a really cool feature. But just setting it up for yourself or setting up for your team to copy, this is where you're going to say, hey, this is a sales meeting, whatever you want to call it, how long it is, 35, uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, what platform you're going to be in, right? Uh, Zoom, Google Meet, you could add other platforms right there through the link. And then a description, and you could make that visible or not visible. Most of the time I see folks saying, uh, providing some context here for the person getting the link. Maybe they open it and forget about it or come back to it later. So you can give them some detail right there. And then this is where you're going to tell them, you scroll down, what, what, Apollo, these are the times people can book with me for this type of meeting. So you're going to pick which days, between what range, you're integrated with your calendar, right? So if, if you have a meeting, then it's not going to offer that up to people. And then one thing you can do is actually book some time. It, Apollo will book time after your meeting so that nobody else can go there, right? Because, and I've had this happen where one day I had 12 meetings in a row. I didn't have any lunch because I forgot to set it up this way. So you might want to give yourself 5, 10, 15 minutes. Maybe that's the time you need to do follow-up, whatever it might be. So you set it up so that you're going to be comfortable in, in using your time to the best of your ability, right? And now you're gonna have these links. You'll notice that it says copy link right here, but we actually make it even easier than that. Because if you go to download the Apollo Chrome extension, if you don't have it, I would go get that today. You just go Google uh, the Apollo Chrome extension in the Google store, download that because you'll notice when I go to my email now, uh, right in my Gmail, if I'm getting back to somebody, you'll see this is my email, right? I've been thinking about looking at Apollo. I could say, Jimmy Junk, uh, I can't wait to meet with you. This is a high priority lead. You don't, you're, I'm not going to make Mr. Jonko wait, right? I just hit meetings right here and I get all the different meeting types I have to make it easy to book with me. They're all right here with the titles. I could say, you know what? Insert that meeting link. Here's a link to my calendar. When they click that, they're going to get a, um, a meeting calendar link that's going to be optimized for that type of lead. So again, it makes it nice and simple. So now we've got our search set up. We've got, we're working our leads better than ever. We made it easy to book with us. We've actually uh, created, and I'll just show you under sequences right here. I've created a meeting no-shows sequence so that I can easily use plays in here and, and change one field to no-show, and they'll go right in there. So I'm not dropping the ball anywhere. Everything's optimized. My time is going, my emotional energy and my time is going to what's going to be most impactful for the business. So let me bring us back to the slides. There's some good questions. And uh, Brian, push that over to Q&A, just so I don't forget that. Those are some good questions. Let me pull up the slides here again. And again, if that was too quick for you or you, you have more questions, uh, setting up different meeting types, including calendar links, sharing your calendar anywhere on social, all of this, it's in the resource kit. Go to Docs. You've, uh, there's been a, there's been a scroller, a scrolling banner at the bottom that with the, the link, get that just so you can pull through on this either today or tomorrow for yourself. Right. 
So now we've got the best leads. We're optimized on our time. We've got the meeting links. Now we're going to get better with cl closed one, right? We want to get better at salespeople at the bottom of that funnel. And it's a lot easier to get better at sales when you see all these other improvements. When you're swimming upstream and everything seems worse, that's, it's usually a pretty difficult time to say, you know what, I'm also going to become a better salesperson. I'm going to get better at closing these leads. But when you're seeing all the success elsewhere, that's a great time to double down on, on investing in your skill set, right? Because uh, you're less in the panic zone. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up Apollo to record our meetings, to provide, uh, to make it easy for coaching, even peer coaching, right? Between other people I work with or just myself, we're going to make it easy to follow up with people. We're going to make it easy for everybody to be on the same page. Uh, but the, the coaching thing to me is the biggest thing because it's one of the things salespeople ask for most, but most they get, they say they get too little of it. And it's something sales managers or, or, or whoever would be providing it says they don't have enough time for and successful deal coaching increases deal size and win rates anywhere from 25 to 40%. I found numbers all over the place, but Salesforce seemed to think it was north of 25%, right? So when you get into Apollo, you set up conversations, it adds a meeting recorder, it goes to the meetings so that it can record it, it transcribes it, it sets up an easy follow-up email, which is really world-class because it provides the meeting, uh, the link to the recording for the prospect, but also provides a summary of what happened, next steps, and any questions that need to be resolved there. And then if you're not doing it, let's start doing self and peer feedback sessions listening to a full meeting, right? A 45 minute meeting just to provide feedback on that. It's a little bit rough, but when you could look at five and see the recaps and look at how long somebody talked and see what's, what's popped up in those meetings. Now you can really start doing more coaching and helping yourself or other people improve. So I'm going to go to Apollo and I'm going to show you how to set that up. This will help Kristen. Wonderful. Yeah. And exactly. Yeah. One of the worst things is that when you're winning or when you're losing, no matter what's going on, uh, when you're all over the place, when you got too much going on, it makes the job really difficult, right? And it's hard to really double down on improving or just even optimizing because you feel like I got to put all my energy to doing what I'm currently doing just to try to dig out of this. Setting this up at the beginning of years was what's going to allow you to really thrive this year. And some of these things, the reason you didn't set it up is well, you, you didn't have the confidence to know what you should build or you didn't feel like you had the time. Now we're walking you through this world-class setup so you can just go in and do it and it'll take a lot less time. So. We're going to go in and set up conversations. I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. But to, to take advantage of this, you're going to want to go to settings. You go to conversations. And this is where you can say, hey, who can be recorded? Do I When do we tell people when they first show up to the meeting, uh, when the recording starts? Um, how many uh, minutes do we want to record if it's for internal meetings, whatever it might be? You could pick which users on the team uh, are going to be have their meetings recorded in this. And you could also put up exclusions, right? And then trackers is where it gets really interesting. And I, I, I think this is one area, even if you are using conversations, that you could take advantage of it more because you can tell Apollo to look for keywords, competitors, to, to look for words that might come up during discovery, to look for words that um, are, are ideal for either coaching or for understanding the pain, right? You could add a whole bunch of them here. And what ends up happening, you'll notice under winning close conversations, I got one of my meetings that was recorded. Let me shrink this so you can see it a little bit better. You'll notice that when you go to the meeting and conversations in Apollo, it's got the full recording, right? You could hit play here, but it's also got the transcript. And even more important is it's got the summary. So now whether it's after I run a meeting, I used to write all these notes by hand and I have to summarize it for my manager, for the solution architect, for their boss potentially. Now it's all here with no work. You can make edits if something's off or you think something else should be prioritized, but you've got the full outcome of the meeting. You've got the next steps and who said it objections that came up, pain points, plus all those key topics, keywords, whatever you want to look for, it's going to track all those as well. There's a little space to leave notes for either yourself, your manager, somebody else on the team, but you've got so much information here and it's so easy to access on every single meeting that it just is a wonderful time saving. And frankly, I think it helps with everybody being on the same page. Now, the thing that people seem to think is really cool here is this draft follow-up email. And it's a small thing, but it really saves you a lot of time and if you compare this to what you might be doing now and the timing of it, sending this very quickly after a meeting, I think it's world-class, it's very professional, and it really covers a lot of stuff people would want to see. You can make changes if you'd like, but you'll notice that it says, hey, here's a meeting recording, here's an overview of it, the next steps that were identified. If you're going to have another meeting, of course, you could pop that meeting link in directly from Apollo and send it over so they could book time for the next one. Nice and simple. Great for coaching. Great to know what happened in a meeting and review it later, 
let's say the next meetings in a month, it gets rescheduled, whatever it might be. Now you've got a great place to find all those details and be on the, uh, know what's happening, be on the same page with other people and make it nice and simple. So let's pop back to those slides. Is this help? Are, are you seeing stuff that you currently don't have set up? I hope so. And again, if you are, we've got the resource kit for you. Go to docs. It's right there. Perfect. Wonderful. Yes. Kristen, Adam, Joshua, all of it. LOL. Adam Witherspoon on the free version. Then hit the right button in the poll when I bring it back up. Uh, and Kristen says he's going to be up till midnight. Wow, this is a great chat. It is a lively chat. Uh, so now we're going to we're going to keep track of all our deals. You guys make me laugh. We're going to keep track of all our deals. We got the best leads of our life. We're organized on our activity. We're not going to be flailing. We're going to be getting better as a salesperson, right? We're going to get coaching. We're going to actually go to people. If we're on a team with other salespeople, we're going to make it real easy to provide peer feedback there and uh, to do it in a, in, a, in a very diligent fashion. Instead of one meeting, it's going to be five, so it doesn't feel like it's nitpicking. Now we're going to keep track of everything in one spot. And why is that important? I mentioned this number earlier. I guess I lied by 0.8%. I said 10. It's 9.2% from the most recent Salesforce survey. But we're going to keep every deal, every detail, everything in one spot. Nothing falls through the crack. And this is the number that's, it's so bothering to me because I know that there's been many times my percentage has been higher than this. Time spent prioritizing leads and opportunities, 9.2%. That's what everybody said. So it's embarrassing to say 9.2%. You know, it's probably higher for a lot of people. And that, you know, if you're doing poorly, you're doing great, no matter what, you've always got so much to do. You just end up doing something just to be busy, right? To feel like you're making forward motion. Um, I think we, when, you, when you start optimizing this and you're seeing a bigger bang for the buck on your time, it really feels great. And we're going to have a bonus here in the resource kit as well that you're going to set up a closed loss nurture sequence. This is great if you have a team, if you have your own business where everybody that says no, now you can know it's worked in a certain way. You've pr prescribed, hey, this is the ideal way for us to follow up over time. You're probably not calling a closed loss deal every day for the next week, right? But over the next few months, this is what we're going to do. We're going to systemize it. We're going to make sure it's world class, that it fits in with our brand and how we want to treat situations. And you're going to pick up more business that way as well. So I'm going to show you just how to set up deals in Apollo, track everything in one place. We're going to, uh, I'll show you a little bit of how to set up that sequence for um, nurturing your closed loss. And then I'm going to show you how you prioritize your follow through on, uh, on these deals in the same place that you have your outbound activity and tasks. So let me hop over there and show you in my instance of Apollo. And I can't look at the chat. You guys are making me laugh. Um, you guys are lively. And as some of you, I remember earlier, you're, it's later in the day for you. So here we go. We're back in our Apollo, our favorite place to be. We've got our leads, our sequences, all that set up. And now you'll notice that there's a spot here right under conversations and meetings called deals. And this is, you'll notice there's some filtering here. I'm going to skip that for a second just to show you um, how my deals are showing up over here. So this is where I've got all my deals that I'm working. Every opportunity is here. And whether it's something I'm, it's early or it's in negotiation, I can pop them all in into my pipeline, which is called pipeline one and have everything organized together. The reason that's important is, and I'll show you here where you set this up. When you go to settings and hit deals, this is where you can select, uh, set up your pipelines. If you just need one for the whole team, if you've got different divisions, different teams that should have different pipelines, you hit create pipeline. You can make that really easy. You could also get into deal deal roles, like who's the, like what should there be a decision maker, gatekeeper. You, you can edit all the fields that would be in your deals that would be important for what you're selling. So it can be very custom. But the reason this gets so interesting is that when you've got everything in one place, like Chris Salzman, this is a deal I'm working, I can add tasks to this and I can say how important it is. So for example, on 15 minutes, I got to get new pricing out to Chris Salzman, or he's going to be very upset with me. So I've got that task, right? As you add these tasks to this, you can say, hey, what do I want to do with it? What's the priority? You'll notice we had tasks from our sequences, for our outbound activity for those great leads we got earlier. You'll notice that when you go to tasks here, you don't need to think. Everything that you need to do for your outbound, for your leads, I've got my organized by priority, right? Obviously, it's prioritizing the uh, things I set are high priority, which are usually those best leads or the active deals, but it's all right here. I don't need to think. I could just pop over to my task and I could start making an impact, whether that's five minutes or four hours before lunch. Everything's in one spot. It's all organized and it's sortable. Calls, emails, 
uh, account actions. Everything's here. So if I, if, hey, I'm burnt out on the phone for the day, I can pop over to something else and do the highest priority of those things as well. So now we've got the best Apollo setup of our life. We've got great leads organized. We're getting recommended prospects and we know why they're being recommended. They're coming to my email as well. I've got all my tasks optimized. Everything's in one spot and it's looking beautiful. What is this going to mean for us, right? And I can't say, Adam, I agree with you. I can't say that word uh, on here because I don't, my mom's watching and I don't say swear words in front of her, but I agree. So let me pull up that deck again. And I've said this four times now, but of course the wrap, uh, the resource kit is in docs. We'll send it to you as well, but make sure to get that. Let's wrap it up. Let's bring it all together, right? We're going to do all these things along the way, all along that funnel. So we can see all those 10% increases. I think on some of these, you're going to see much more. You'll know what you're currently doing to find leads, how you're optimizing for quality and organizing it and how you're working them. My guess is, and a lot of my friends at organizations, they're going to see more than 10% increases. So for our leads, we're going to set up buyer intent signals, lead scoring. You're going to set up uh, multi-channel quality sequences. You're going to have higher touches for those best leads, right? You're going to put more attention there. We're going to set up our meetings, make it easy to book with us, makes it easy for us to optimize our calendar for the best leads. We're going to get better with our meetings because we got conversations. So whether it's us reviewing our meetings or a manager or a peer, we're going to improve as salespeople this year. And we're also just going to have this awesome follow-up to our prospects where they get everything they might want. And we're going to have it all in one place. All those details all along the way for me, a teammate, somebody else in the organization, easy to find it in one place, right? Because last year, hamster wheel, I, like, maybe it wasn't. If it was the best year ever and you're not doing this, then it's going to be even better this year. If last year you were struggling, if you're one of those 70% of salespeople that said last year was tough, this year, let's make it better. You don't need to be dancing like these guys in the office, but let's make sure 2024 is a great year, a year to remember, and something that sets you up for the rest of your, you know, 2025, 2026. Now, if you don't have pro, if you just set up your free trial account today, if you're saying, hey, I want to make sure I could do all this, these are reasons to get the professional or the custom plan because then you can really maximize some of the things I showed you. Some of the coolest things, right? Like the buying intent topics and the signals. I love Jill Conrad's snap selling book. That really allowed me to do more activity with a targeted lead list to the mid-market and enterprise. Signals is something I wish I had that. That would really allow me to, to double down on that. You get a multiple mailboxes per user. And it, we, you didn't get into it today. I'm going to do some content on this, but doing a really world-class A-B testing so you could constantly be optimizing. All this, everything you saw today plus more is in the pro and the custom plan. And I think that's very reasonable. So we're going to put the poll up again just to see. Um, let me make sure I got it here. We got everybody's votes. So I'm going to be sharing this right now. Again, option number one, a new to Apollo. I want to get a demo. Hey, Josh. Hey, James. Hey, everybody. Uh I came on because it's time for some Q&A, unless yep. I messed up your flow. Is it Q&A time, James? No, it's Q&A time. We're right into it. All right. So this is how you know these are real live webinars. Now, keep that poll up, James. Don't don't hide that. That's the best thing ever. Um, it's got to be open, though. There we go. I just opened it. So uh, you all can see the poll, right? Let, let us know in the chat if you can, if you can't. This is what decides if James or I get uh, get paid. So if you like us, you know, say, say yes to the first two, but just kidding. Say yes, whatever you want. And also uh, uh, feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn or email us about what kind of training you want. Uh, I'm going to send you guys James's LinkedIn as a ticker right now, but we're going to dive into a bunch of questions. I've been saving some uh, throughout the webinar. Uh, okay, so here's a ticker for, for connecting with James on LinkedIn. I, I recommend you guys do. He's active there. So, okay, a couple of the Q&As. Um, Brian has asked uh, about how many emails we recommend to send per day. I think he's asking if 50, I would say per mailbox, 50 is a good rule of thumb, but depends on your domain quality and uh, your domain reputation. So if you have a really established website, with a lot of transactional email volume that your customers are opening and engaging with, you can definitely go a little higher than that. Our next webinar, everybody, is on email deliverability. There's a ton of new Apollo features around deliverability that just launched, and we're going to walk you through how to use them. So, um, James, uh, people are asking about buyer intent as well, and they're asking how how accurate is the buyer intent data? What what do you have to say there? I went and met with uh, with our one of our competitive intel folks on that, and it's Bombora buyer intent data. 
uh, it's, it's it's considered the Cadillac of that sort of information, right? So we're leveraging the Bombora buyer intent data and then normalizing it with all the data we normally have in Apollo. So, um, it, you know, it, it, can it be uh, uh, pinpoint accuracy when somebody, you know, is they have high intent? It can't, it, it's not reading people's minds, but it's looking at actions and, and data that it can find in terms of searches and activity online to, to approximate whether it's low, medium or high. And they can, you know, they're looking at so much data, I was told, that they feel pretty good about putting people into those categories. But again, somebody that's not doing anything on the computer, not doing anything online, but says, I'm definitely going to buy that thing, there won't be any data for that, right? So it's not the end all be all, but it's a great way to filter down and have a, a very good theory that, hey, these people are looking, whether it's high, medium, low, you don't need to necessarily lock yourself into that, but you're going to want to touch those folks if they're looking. Absolutely. Uh, okay, a couple more questions. I am seeing like Amelia, I'm seeing a bunch of questions in the chat. Please put them in the Q&A. It's just, it's really hard for me to keep up with the chat. Uh, okay. Uh, people are asking about the hub, about integrations. We have just to clarify, Apollo integrates with HubSpot and Salesforce right now today. Uh, you don't have to wait for that. Pipe drive is coming next. And the further the integration roadmap beyond that, I don't have any insight to. Um, you can always use Zapier to kind of mock up an integration between whatever CRM you're using and Apollo. So if, if that's gobbledygook for you, uh, James, let's make a note. Let's make an Apollo Academy course on using Zapier with Apollo. I think that's that'll actually be really valuable. Be really valuable. Uh, okay. So uh, a couple more questions. What do you recommend to target high quality leads? on non-industry specific keywords, such as sustainability or conscious leadership. They're more psychographic and I'm not sure how to get a good list on this. What would you say to that, James? You know, I keep getting the psychographic question. You'll have, excuse me, I know that um, that hasn't come up before. I'm not 100% sure I understand the question, but I think I get what you're saying, which is, uh, it's not gonna be a simple box to check. In signals, if you dig into there, you'll notice, and I've been testing them all out, there's a lot of options, including keywords or things that are more, um, vibe's not the right word, but more of a, a, a wider funnel to mean something. You can program it that way. You can also program proxies through our scoring. So I've been testing that lately where you can start saying, okay, when people are in the realm of this, oftentimes we see this. So if you have an understanding of the proxies or if it's just keywords, you could pop it in there. Uh, one of the things I like in here, I don't think pe people are using enough is job changes. When I was a career builder, I learned that oftentimes you can learn a lot about the priorities of a company by looking at their job posting. So much so that one time I wrote an article about Microsoft and I, I got a request to take it down because there was stuff in job postings on their site that they hadn't announced yet. Because when you're going to make a product, right, you put job postings up. So I think the job postings, the new hires, the, the new hire roles by department, all that is oftentimes good proxies for other things too. Fantastic. Okay. I've had a couple questions come in around this. This is for you, Adam. Adam is asking, do users get alerts on resource links that were clicked by prospects? To The answer is you can create this. You have to use Apollo Plays to do that. So uh, Plays is essentially Apollo's uh, workspace or our, our automation um, uh, process or like I'm, I'm blanking. It's late at night. It's our automation builder. Um, there are a lot of things you can do with plays, including building, uh, like automated notifications. If this, then that will happen sort of. Exactly. Stuff. And I'm actually going to send a little link along the screen right now. We have a community of Apollo power users, where if you have a question on how to do something with Apollo, uh, and you want to talk to other practitioners in the space. Join the, click this link and fill out the form. We'll add you to the Slack community we have, and you'll get connected to thousands of other Apollo users where any kind of questions like this, you know, in the course of your day, when you're not in a, in a webinar with us, you'll be able to, to ask. Um, okay, so Chris is asking, can you share a blueprint for sequences for closed loss deals and good sequences for cold leads? In the resource kit, Kristen, we have cold leads. Um, and for all of you who've never been to Apollo Academy, if you just go to apollo.io slash academy, there's a ton of resources there on how to email cold leads. For closed lost, we don't have a sequence blueprint for what I call a raise the dead campaign. Basically, what I do is every six months, I'll go through and I'll re-engage closed lost deals that are at least six months old. 
So you don't want to wait, you know, you don't want to have a closed loss and then you hit them up three months later. That's too soon. I want to be hitting up somebody who was closed loss six months, nine months, 10 months, 11 months ago and get them before their next renewal cycle comes up. You often can win deals, not on the first try, but the second or the third try. Uh, but we'll we'll look into creating some resources for you there. Uh, okay, uh, can you add images in the email layout sequences, James? Can you add images to sequences? You in in the uh, I, I don't see that question right in the emails of the sequence. I think in, yeah, in the in the email of the sequence, you can. And um, so you, with the the email editor here, you could do a lot of things, but doesn't mean you want to do it right. And if we're looking at, and we're going to do more on email deliverability here, but you generally want to minimize the amount of images and links. I actually learned this from a, a webinar last year that Josh was hosting uh, about how, you know maybe one link, right? You want to simplify your signature, everything, so that you don't get pushed to spam, which is harder and harder, right? So you can put images in there. You can put uh, as many links as you want, but what the data seems to indicate you want to do is as few images and as few links as possible. Fantastic. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. What's what's standing out to you, James? Uh oh, uh oh, one minute left. I'm gonna throw it at you. Okay. Um, wow, everybody is just saying great, great talk, great webinar. All right, I guess my we're gonna end with a question for you guys. In the last 45 seconds of the chat, was this a helpful webinar for you guys? Was there anything we didn't cover that you want us to cover? Uh, do you have any feedback for us? We want to put these on. We want to we want to make sure you guys get value from them. So let us know. We've got 30 seconds left. Yeah. And, th and uh, some people have already been messaging me on LinkedIn that they like this. So I appreciate that. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm in our sales community uh, that we have post in Slack as well. So if there's things you wish we would have covered or you want more context, feel free to reach out. I look forward amazing. to Amazing. And for those of you who questions weren't answered, join the community, connect on LinkedIn, send us an email. We hope we all have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you in a few weeks on our next webinar. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.